As a teacher, your first step is deciding how problems will be solved by your students. And this depends on the progression from EPBL to IPBL. A single X problem could be chosen by you as a teacher for all students or teams to solve. Or you could assign or permit choice from a range of X problems. Or students could generate an X problem for all students or teams to complete. Or students could generate a range of X problems and then choose which X problem team to join. Or teams or individuals could generate their own X problems. But this choice is a key indicator to what extent the project will be focused on the student, or IPBL, and what opportunities will exist for students to develop project management, collaboration, moonshot thinking, creativity, and entrepreneurship. Now students can be guided in their choices through provided resources, stories, movies, presentations, lectures, excursions, class activities, or mini projects guided towards particular problems that may integrate with other learning areas, or because you're constrained by the ICT resources available to the class, such as robotic kits or software, or just that you want to make them use those. Or it may be that there's particular gaps in the digital technologies curriculum that you need to address. But where possible, IBBL should permit stu students to draw upon a wide range of ICT with an increasing breadth and depth of ICT and other entrepreneurial capital upon which they can draw upon so that they can select and solve X problems. And while specific constraints can be introduced to ensure that the curriculum outcomes are achieved, if IPL projects are occurring well, they should naturally cover the digital technologies curriculum. And as you'll see in this course, it's been structured to show how that can occur. Now, with the X problem decided, students should be encouraged or required to explain what the entrepreneurial opportunities exist for that problem. What aspects of the problem need solving or the opportunities that arise from that problem. And from this, they need to go through a planning and management process of the resources available to complete the project, primarily time because that's always the constraint we live most within. And that will often involve developing a project timeline. But it can also be looking at human resources through developing project teams, equipment available such as hardware, software and internet access. But the tough one will be always be team selection. It's an important and delicate part of PBL. But developing students' understanding and responsibility for human resource management is an important aspect of PBL and strategic thinking. Now, time will always be a constraint over which we have little control in traditional schooling environments. But digital technology projects can be incorporated into other learning areas through cross-curricular approaches and other um, techniques. And this can greatly increase the available time for a project. Now, resources can also be a challenge, but it can be built into the process where students are required to convince teachers and school leaderships, PNC or local businesses to support projects. And this can involve producing budgets, fundraising, funding proposals, and investor presentations. Throughout this module, we've explored the use of student-centered based, student-centered project-based learning, IBBL. Teaching students how to manage collaboration, to set ambitious X goals, to develop their creativity, and to become entrepreneurial. These are some of the capabilities they will need to be successful in the world today, and form the first of the thinking skills for digital technologies, being a strategic thinker. That concludes the first module. You've now got the quiz to do, uh, to see what you've learnt. And there are two practical activities. One will develop your understanding of coding and the other of robotics. This week, the coding activity introduces you to computer programming through a nice, gentle um, set of tutorials. And the robotics activity introduces you to the Edison robot. Finally, there's the student solution activity, 
where you can work progressively through the elements that we've been exploring this week and develop your own example IPBL activity. Now I hope you'll join us on Wednesday afternoon from 3.30pm in the Collaborate session and I really look forward to seeing your responses to the activities you've completed during these modules.